Okay. Wir fangen an beim Android-Track mit Matthias Friedrich von der GDG Bremen, der euch erzählt, wie man den großen Bildschirm erobert. Ja, yep. danke Ben. Uh, thanks Ben. So, welcome here in the Android track, the first talk. Um, how did you sleep, guys? So, for me, it was way too short. So, when I f start falling asleep, just throw something at me. Um, yeah. I don't know, maybe the uh, title of the talk is a bit misleading because I think you expect it to be about Google TV, right? It is not, but still it has its part in it. So yeah, I'm talking about Android ruling the big screen, but not Android on the big screen itself, but using second screen protocols to, yeah, to own it, to rule it. So that's me. I'm an Android developer at Green Robot, Java developer, co-founder, and organizer of GDG Bram. Uh, yeah, feel free to uh, follow me at Twitter or circle me at Google+. Plus. Yeah, um, on the last earnings call of Google, Larry Page said that as screens multiply, the ability to navigate across them seamlessly becomes more and more important. In June uh, this year, I was at a TV hack day, actually, in Munich. So there were some big companies like Pro7, Z1 Media, Axel Springer, ZDF, and so on and so on. And I expected, yeah, bring the TV experience further, make more of it, bring some interaction between all the devices. But when they talk about TV, it's all about this, just about How, the, how people talk about the TV, the TV program, how do they communicate with each other while they watch TV. And yeah, we have so many devices at home in our living room, tablets, smartphones, and so on and so on. And I would really like to see this going further to, so that you can interact with your TV program or um, yeah, Uh, that you have the choice what happens on the TV and bring this whole TV experience a bit further. So that's why I do this talk. I want to show you some possibilities to do even that, to interact from your other devices with the big screen in your living room. So, and now I will present three um, protocols that Google pushes on Android that you can use. So the first one is the Animo protocol. It's a protocol from Google for Google TV. Um, yeah, it's, it's an open source protocol. You can look that stuff up. And it's running on all Google TV devices, actually. So it requires a pairing. When you have an application that uses it, You trigger it that it looks up, is there a Google TV on my network? And then you choose the device. And on the Google TV, there will a uh, dialog pop up showing a pin that you have to enter in your application. And then both devices get uh, paired to each other. And then you can communicate from your application to the Google TV. And yeah, it's actually a one-way communication. There's no way from the Google TV device to your smartphone. But you can do all what you like. You can send Android intents. You can send simple key codes. And it's not, um, it's not bound to one application on your Google TV device. It's actually system-wide. So whatever application you have running on your Google TV right now, whatever is in front, you can control it. Yeah, and it uses protocol buffers. Protocol buffers are a um, uh, serialization format, also by Google. 
And yeah, this is actually the first application that uses this protocol, the official Google TV remote. It behaves like a standard um, TV remote, as you know it, from every TV. Yeah, it's although Google TV is uh, available throughout the world, this one is actually just available in the USA. Why ever? And it's actually pretty bad. So there are no layouts for large devices on a tablet, or so there's no um, landscape layout for it. So it always stays in portrait mode. And some guys actually did this stuff for the Chrome browser too. So they copied the whole layout and did a Chrome extension. So uh, implementing the AnyMode protocol too. So you can control your Google TV even from the, yeah, from your laptop, desktop PC, whatever. And, but that's not the only use case for this AnyMode protocol. So at the company I'm, wor I'm working for, we did this application. It's a classic um, EPG, electronic program guide for the German uh, TV program. And you can look some infos up for some broadcast, for example, for this movie there. And yeah, you can um, search for YouTube videos inside the app and you can pair this application to a Google TV and um, push this uh, yeah, videos directly to the TV. That's one use case for any mode. So I also saw some guys that did some awesome games with it and yeah, it's pretty powerful. Um, yeah, but as you know, I guess uh, no one uses Google TV in Germany. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we are thinking about kicking that out and replacing it with Google Cast as uh, with Chromecast. Um, as soon uh, Chromecast will be available here in Germany. Yeah, but let's take a look at uh, the implementations of AnyMode. There's this one official library from Google, the AnyMode library. You can look it up at that uh, address. There are all the official example projects from Google for Google TV. Yeah, it implements the pairing protocol and the AnyMode protocol itself. There are two different ones. And it's based on an Android service. Uh, yeah, and it manages the whole life cycle for the pairing. It provides a pairing UI, the dialogue, and so on and so on. But it's, um, yeah, when you think about some software from Google, you don't expect this. It's so buggy, it's really cruel. The code is uh, not awesome. Yeah, it's very unstructured. So don't use this, but use this one of this instead. There are implementations for Java, JavaScript, Python, C++, and there's actually one better implementation as the uh, AnyMode library that also runs on Android. It's AnyMode for Java by Leon Nitschels. That was uh, a few months ago. He was a Google, de um, Google developer expert for Google TV actually in the USA. And now he joined the Google Developer Advocate team for Chromecast, actually. So that one knows what he does. Yeah. What do you do when you want to use this library? So um, here you see the dependencies of here for Gradle. Um, yeah, it comes with uh, a few jar files. Um, the AnyMode library itself then the library I just talked about, and um, the next one is Bouncy Castle, actually, to pair the certificate you get from the Google TV uh, to save the certificate on your device. Then Polo, that's a pairing protocol, and the Protopuff for serializing the stuff that goes between the devices. Yeah, then you... Uh, also need this permissions, of course. I think that's pretty clear. 
And yeah, what do you do in the code actually? When you uh, have your activity, basically you need two classes, the animal client service that's not actually a service, it's just called like that, but it's also um, running on normal Java, so it's not an Android service, and the animal sender. Yeah, in your, in your on-create, for example, you just have um, to create an Android platform that's actually a wrapper around the context, and yeah, get an instance from the Android, Android client service, implement some listeners, and then by select device, you can um, start the discovery for devices on your own network. And then when it finds something, it, oh no, of course, you don't have to forget on the story. I already forget it, as you see. <laughs> yeah, just to uh, feel the stuff. And when it found a device, it calls on select device, gives you some TV devices and the listener you can uh, put your device you want to choose in. And after that, it calls on pin required and the Google TV itself should show the dialogue with the pin and you have to give it to this listener. Um, these methods are actually not called on the main thread, so that's always a, a, yeah, a problem I'm running on. <laughs> I always forget that. And yeah, when um, the connection uh, successed, it will call unconnected and you get the animal sender and you can use that to actually send some stuff to the Google TV device. For example, like this. Here, yeah, this is uh, just a simple URI or intent to open the YouTube app on the Google TV and show a video. You just define with YouTube video ID, that's the one you see in every URL in the browser when you, when you are surfing on YouTube. Yeah, so now you could say, why implement this stuff for Google TV? Because no one uses it, right? And Google TV is dead. <laughs> no, it's actually not. Um, at I.O. this year, I asked the Google TV developer advocates about this. Actually, the lead of them, Les Fogel, and he said, uh, animal will stay. Um, yeah, with that and Talking to some Google TV developer advocates, um, I, get th I got the confirmation that actually we will see another high-end Google TV device. It, maybe it won't be called Google TV anymore, but it will be released, he said, this year, but I think it's getting later. And yeah, it will come to Germany too, he said. I I'm just can say what I heard, so. I'm excited to see this happen. Um, yeah, um, the rumor is that uh, Google TV will not be dead, but we brand it to Android TV actually. So right now, Google TV and Android TV are two separated projects. So when the Android team does some new code, Google TV doesn't have it immediately. They always have to adjust stuff and so on. But with this rebranding, they plan to uh, merge them again. And so when there comes a new Android version, it will be a new Android TV version too. So and all this um, additional stuff they did in the Google TV project will be something like the, not the play services, but the TV services. So I'm looking forward to that. So, but that was any mode. Now let's change to the second protocol. That's, uh, yeah, not that much a protocol, but a API in the Android framework itself, the presentation API. That's, yeah, at first when you want to use it, go to your device um, under settings display and wireless display and turn this trigger on. And then it will look up in your area, actually not in your local network, but in your area because it uses 
Wi-Fi direct connections um, for Miracast devices. So um, I have a Miracast device with me, so when you later on try it out, do something on the hackathon with it, come to me, I can show you. Um, yeah, presentation API. Um, it basically, it's multi-screen management on Android. It's available since Android 4.2, Jellybean. And yeah, as I said, it has support for Miracast that is actually Wi-Fi direct. And yeah, it's really in this Wi-Fi standard. Um, and yeah, they plan to um, reach some state in which every Wi-Fi device will be um, compatible with Miracast. So some of you may also know Intel Wireless Display. Um, yeah, maybe um, they both get mixed up, but Wireless Display is actually um, cancelled by Intel and they now joined the Miracast because it was very similar. Uh, similar. So which, one, which devices support Miracast? Uh, for example, all the newer Nexus devices since the Nexus 4 and the Nexus 5, of course, Nexus 7, I think both of them, 2012 and 2013. Then the newer Samsung devices, newer HTC, LG, Sony, all the high-end devices support it. Yeah, um, actually, there are two basic classes you need. Um, yeah, the me media router and the presentation itself. So, first, we'll take a look. Let's take a look at the presentation. The presentation is actually um, extension of the class Android App Dialog. Um, yeah, and it so it sits on top of your activity actually, but it has its own context. And uh, it does that because, as you know, the big screens can have different layouts, different densities, different orientations, because when you hold your uh, phone in portrait, you don't want to have the portrait layout on the big screen, right? So you can um, define separate layouts and all the other configuration stuff for that and actually also uh, put a separate theme to it. Yeah, the presentation API, um, yeah, how to implement it. It's actually pretty simple. Just get a media router from the uh, as a system service, just like any other system services you know, and add a callback to it and um, define what kind of route do you want to have. In this case, it's a, a live video route, so you can, yeah, mirror your um, screen uh, via this route through the big screen. So, but, uh, yeah, um, sorry. Yeah, the callback, the listener you have to implement, um, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, it um, informs you when there is a root found via Wi-Fi Direct, of course, and then you can just um, um, call something on the router you get to show your presentation. So you instantiate your presen presentation and throw it on the... No, where is it? Throw it on the router somewhere. Did I miss this? Yeah, okay, your uh, presentation is actually, as I said, just a dialogue and you, be, uh, you do with it just what you do with other dialogues too. And yeah, you can actually do whatever you like on there. So when you use this, you don't see your normal activity on the big screen. Uh, so that's a default behavior you would get when you don't use this API. So it would be just mirrored from your 
smartphone to the big screen, but when you use this, you can do whatever you like on the big screen while you have your activity that implements this in the foreground on your smartphone. So, um, and I actually like this one. That's one of the few apps that actually implement it. It's a, a companion app for a card game called Munchkin, and it's just a simple counter. Um, you have to uh, just press some buttons on a smartphone while you play the game with some other guys, and everyone can see on the big screen how the stats actually are. It's pretty cool. It's a use case for that. So they are actually not that, although it's available since Android 42, I just know this app that actually uses this API. That's pretty sad, I think. So yeah, when you have a great idea, do it maybe in the, I don't know, not in the Akaton. It's SDK level seven, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. But the next um, big topic in TV when you uh, ask Google is Chromecast, and that's the third protocol I'm introducing here, I'm presenting here. And yeah, Chromecast has actually a long history. So at first in 2011, we at Google I.O., we saw Android at home, or how they called it, Project Tungsten. So it was actually that what Chromecast does today, pushing some media stuff on another device so the other device plays it. So it's just sending some IDs and launching an application on another device. That they already did at 2011, but it took two years to bring it to uh, the final product. So in between, they brought the Nexus Q, and we never heard of that also again. And then late 2012, there came some progress to it. Um, suddenly, some button, actually, this button, uh, the icon you see on the left, appeared in YouTube, in the official YouTube app, when you had some Google TV device running on your network. And then, yeah, you could suddenly push YouTube videos to your Google TV device without pairing, without doing the animal stuff. Yeah, and with that, um, the dial protocol got announced. That's actually a protocol um, developed by Netflix, not by Google, but they are cooperating somehow. And um, that's actually the protocol that does all the um, discovering stuff of devices and actually launching the application on the other device. Actually, um, yeah, that's what Android at Home uh, suggested. So maybe Netflix was in there too at Android at Home. I don't know. It's uh, yeah, a weird story. Yeah, it's... Uh, called Discovery and Launch, and as I said, it finds devices on the network, you, then you can choose the device and launch the application with a content ID. And yeah, Chromecast is actually more than just the style protocol, it's also the RAMP protocol that's, uh, I guess, by Google. I couldn't, found, I couldn't find much about it. It's used for the player status updates, for example, the volume, the uh, pressing pause, press, pressing play, and so on. Seeking the video progress, and so on. That's the RAMP protocol. On top of dial, actually. And, yeah. Um, then there is WebRTC. That's actually uh, something additionally to Chromecast. Um, and it can just be done between browsers. Because it's web technology, right? Um, so, with Chromecast, there came the Google Cast SDK preview. So, uh, this one covers actually the dial and WAMP protocol, but not WebRTC. So, you cannot do um, WebRTC and the uh, yeah, screening stuff you can do between uh, Chrome and Chromecast. But what do you can do? Um, yeah, you can do this. 
That's actually what Chromecast and the Google Cast SDK does. So you can look some content up on your um, devices, on your laptop, on your PC, on your smartphone, tablet, whatever. And uh, yeah, push this ID for this content to this small stick, what is actually the Chromecast device. So you hook that up to your TV and then this, this media you just looked for on your other device will get started on the big TV. That's pretty cool actually, without any pairing, just open a YouTube video, press a button and it runs on the big screen. So, and yeah, the WebRTC stuff, that's actually um, additional. So when you have um, a Chrome running on your laptop, you can also press this button. That it has, yeah, uh, several functions actually, several meanings, it's pretty weird as this whole Chromecast stuff is. And yeah, then it streams the whole tab from your Google uh, Chrome browser to the screen. So in this case, it really streams the actual content you see on your secondary, uh, on your first device. So it's not, in that case, it's not delivering just some ID to the big screen, to the Chromecast, but the whole um, stuff you see at the moment on your screen. Yeah, but Chromecast, as you maybe know, is uh, right now US only. So you cannot get it here. But I think, yeah, I have one around here. So when you want to try it out, come to me later on. We will find some TV and try it out then. Um, yeah. And Chromecast is actually. Um, uh, yeah, restricted. So when you want to um, build something to open on there, you cannot do it just like that. It is, uh, so Chromecast wants um, modified version of Chrome actually, and um, all that's running on there are just simple websites. So when you push something to it, it just opens a website with a HTML, video play, whatever, and opens the um, referenced video on it. So, and to implement this website you can open on it, you have to be whitelisted by Google. So they have to say, yeah, it's fine what you did, you have some great content you can deliver, we are whitelisting you so you can implement it to be opened on Chromecast. Um, yeah, to go around that and to play around with this stuff in the whole world, you can use this application. It's called Cheapcast. It's done by a GDG manager, a GDG organizer from Aachen, Sebastian Mauer. That's sadly not here. Um, yeah, he's sadly not here. And yeah, what it does, it turns any Android device a Google TV, a tablet, a smartphone, whatever, into a Chromecast, actually. So your, animo, uh, your Android device will behave exactly like a Chromecast device. So it just starts a service in the background and immediately you will see this Chromecast button popping up on your YouTube, uh, Google Play, Google Music application, whatever, on your um, other Android devices. It's pretty cool. I tr so when I implemented the Google Cast SDK and tried it out, I used always this one with my smartphone and my Nexus 7. So personally, I don't have a um, Chromecast, but you can do all this stuff with this one. It's pretty great. So go to the Play Store, look for Cheapcast and try it out. Um, yeah. Using uh, Google Cast SDK, what do you need? There are some dependencies you have to add. Um, again, here the Gradle dependencies. Um, yeah, the support libraries by Google, the support library v4, the support app compared to v7, and the media router library v7, because um, yeah, Chromecast, it's 
is built on the media router APIs again, just like the presentation API, but it adds some additional stuff. So you cannot just use the media router API in the normal Android framework, even not from 4.3. Uh, I'm not sure about 4.4. Um, yeah, so you need to add this additional library. And then there's a jar file, the Google Cast SDK itself. You can download it here yeah, and add it. Um, uh, in front, before I show you all the code, um, this stuff is pretty experimental, I guess. So it's to understand this code is pretty confusing and uh, I tried it out and I got it working but I'm not that firm in it actually. It's pretty confusing stuff. So you're not, they are using some classes and when you try to look them up in the official documentation of the Google Cast SDK, there's nothing at all what, saying what it does actually. So it's pretty weird. And yeah, let's don't forget this permissions again and you can use it uh, with min SDK 7. So actually you can use it in the retro hackathon, right? Yeah, so um, let's implement it. Um, as you see, there are some media root classes. Um, yeah, we all we need all of them. In the presentation API, we just needed media router, right? Now you need four additional classes. And yeah, a short overview, what I think, what they do. The media router selector, with that, um, that's actually the one that builds a dialog when you press a button. And um, yeah, on the selector you can say what application do you want to look for on the network. So do you want to start uh, YouTube applications on the other device, Google Music applications or whatever. You can define it here. Um, yeah, then it does actually the discovery of devices and yeah, we have this cast context. That's actually again just a wrapper around the normal context. Um, yeah, whatever it does, I looked at the code and it's uh, yeah made unreadable actually. So I don't know what it does exactly. So then there's a media wood adapter that provides actually the um, real device you get and you can add some volume status update. No, you get some volume up update, update statuses from it. So when the TV turns louder, you get some call to that listener. And then there's the media router callback that provides the root actually. Uh, yeah, the root is the connection between the devices you don't need the root at all, you just provide it to some other class, but yeah, you have to implement it. Yeah, and then there's a state change listener that's actually in the documentation also about volume updates. I don't know which one to use, so just try it out when you're interested. The documentation doesn't say which one gets called actually. So, um, yeah, and then in your own create, you have some, you have to do some stuff, uh, create a cast context, wrap your application context, uh, create the root adapter, and so on. Uh, yeah, then there's a media root helper that is a wrapper about the actual interesting stuff. So, and you cannot look up what it actually does. So, um, what I know you can, uh, define two different meta root providers. One is just a pretty simple one that just supports um, opening the application on the Chromecast and doing the volume stuff, but not the play status stuff. So with that you cannot hit play or hit pause. You can just launch the application with an ID and get updates about the uh, volume. And then there's another one um, so, uh, 
not minimal media, media provider, I forget his name actually, and that one does all the interesting stuff. So hitting play and seeking the player status and so on. Yeah, then with, uh, yeah, you create a media root selector. Actually, you, get, you don't create it, but you get it from some helper again and you don't know what it does. You just have to uh, categorize what do you want to use. So with this register minimal media router provider and with this category cast, you define that you want to use the simple stuff. Yeah, then you have to implement this uh, to uh, listener listeners media router callback and cast media root adapter. Yeah, and also don't forget free all that stuff in on destroy. And yeah, in on start you actually can um, add the uh, selector to the media router and with that you trigger the actual discovery of devices. So, yeah, and then your listeners will be get called. On in on stop, uh, again, don't forget to remove your callback. Um, yeah, and what I actually used is a med uh, media button action provider to put this button actually to the action bar, just like YouTube and all the other applications that support uh, Chromecast to it, um, you could actually also just implement a simple media root button and put it wherever in your activity. But when you do that, Google won't support your application because there are UI guidelines how you have to do it and they say already put it to the action bar. Yeah, that's the stuff about implementing the action provider. And here you see our two callbacks. Um, yeah. You actually get the root and just uh, put it to the media root helper. As I said, it, you don't need the root itself. You just put it to some other class. And I don't know why the um, SDK does it on its own. It's, yeah, in preview. And here's the media root adapter. You also have to implement that one you get, uh, with that one you get the actual device itself and you can finally open a session to it and open some application on the device. So that one we see here. And yeah, I just defined to open YouTube on um, the Chromecast device and provided, again, some simple YouTube video ID. So, and how to do this is actually not documented too. So for every application that exists for Chromecast, for Google Music, Netflix, YouTube, uh, Hulu Now and Pandora too, um, and Google Play Music, you have to find it out somehow how to start this stuff. So there are some smart guys who found it out, actually looking at the network traffic and so on and so on. Yeah, you can find it out when you want, actually, but it's not documented. And actually, when you think about Google Play Movies, you won't get the ID you need to send to the Chromecast device for a special movie, right? For YouTube, it's easy, but for all this other uh, proprietary stuff, I don't know. Yeah, then a small conclusion about this three um, protocols. Any mode is actually pretty f powerful, but it depends on what will happen with Google TV. So will it get market share as Android TV? Will it not? So I don't know if it's worth implementing. I really like it. I think I will do something with it in the future still, but yeah, it's more a hobby. I won't I wouldn't bet on it.
And then the presentation API and Miracast, it's, uh, yeah, you don't have a dedicated device. So with Google TV, you always have the device. Uh, and also with Chromecast, you have a device itself. You start something from your uh, smartphone or tablet and it runs on there and you can put your smartphone to trash or whatever and it will still run. But <laughs> with the presentation API, it really mirrors what is happening on your um, first screen. So, yeah, and it will always be that what you have really in foreground on your first screen. So, Miracast is also in uh, experimentation state right now. They are standardizing still and so on and so on, but it's nice. And then there's Google Cast. Google Cast, as I said, is, it's weird. You have to be whitelisted. You have to be really some big media company to get whitelisted, actually, at least for now. And it's a very confusing SDK, badly documented. And yeah, it's still in preview. Maybe it will get better. But it has already a really big market share. So the device actually costs just $35. So people buy it and put it in all of their rooms. Yeah, it's a big success. And yeah, maybe it's said that uh, Google Cast SDK will get support for Android TVs. And so when they are rebranded to Android TV actually, and when we, s when we really see some new devices, I bet that Google Cast will be uh, compatible with it. And then we can think about stuff like directly launching other Android apps from the smartphone on the Google TV with it, and not just websites like, a, like on Chromecast. So it will get interesting, I guess. Yeah, and that's it for me. Thanks. Yeah, when you have some questions, come to me later or whatever, and have a nice day first.